Oh, welcome back my friends. Today we are going to be powder coating. A few of you guys have been asking me and sending me emails about uh, how I powder coat and some tips on what they're trying to achieve and why they're not being able to get the results they want. So anyways, this is how I powder coat and what I use and how I do it. First, you need some cast bullets. Here are the ones we did in our video over on Rumble. We have some Lee 358158s. We have the MP359125 with the pentapoint inserts. And these are a Lee 312155R. I'm going to be using those for the 300 blackout and uh, probably a little bit of 308 Winchester as well. So yeah, first step, you need some bullets. And then you'll need some powder coating. This is Eastwood's Ruby Red. I really like this. It works in usually in one coat, just like the Ford Light Blue. So I like having these two. You can also mix them for some good combinations. A spoon for uh, scooping and stirring and all that good stuff. You're gonna need some pans that you can use in your oven. You're gonna need an oven. I have it preheating right now at 400 degrees and you're going to end up cooking for usually 20 minutes but read the directions on your powder coat just to make sure. Sometimes if you like standing them up, a set of pliers is nice. Here I use these two containers for actually shaking and mixing and getting my powder coat to stick to our bullets. It's good to have some paper towels handy to wipe out your containers or wipe off your sheets or something like that just to get a nice clean surface. You're going to need something to keep your bullets from sticking to your pans. Here I have some non-stick parchment paper. You can also use some non-stick aluminum foil. That stuff works pretty well. You can usually get two or three uses out of each of them. It just depends on which you want to use. There are other methods, but I'm going to try these two today. Once you have your projectiles coated, you need to shake off the excess. That's what this is for. And then after I shake that, I let any excess powder fall into this piece of parchment paper, which I can then pour back into my container. And this sheet is just for ease of uh, use, ease of moving it around. And also don't set your hot molds on a plastic table. It's also nice to have some good heat resistant gloves. Some welder's gloves work. If you're into that, you can also use some simple leather work gloves. Just make sure they're not wet. And then a way to take your tray in and out of your oven. I just use this little piece of wood. It works really well, kind of like you're feeding a pizza in and out. I'll show you here in a bit. So stick with me and I'll show you how we get this started. So I said I save my powder after each use from what gets left behind in this tray here. So I'm gonna throw a couple bullets in here to test whether or not it'll still stick. Sometimes it'll go bad after a certain period of time, but we can test a few just to see and uh, I'll start here and we'll go from there. And also, once you get a little bit of that powder coating on your fingers, it's not actually going to hurt you. Just make sure you don't have an open wound or something, but then you'll be free to pick up the bullets with your bare skin. Except it won't be bare, you'll have some of this powder coating on there, which will kind of protect it from the oils and stuff on your fingers. So I'm going to grab a few of these, just drop in like two or three, and then we'll put our lid on and I'll shake it around. And we'll see what we get. So here's what our three bullets look like when they're just coated with some like four month old powder that's been sitting out in my humid garage. So this Ford Blue and the green I have in it obviously have no problem sticking. And if we have a little spot from picking it up, if you have it on your fingers you can roll it around and it'll kind of spread that out. But I don't have enough on my fingers right now. But anyways, I'm gonna add some Ford Blue to what's already in there and we're gonna have good coverage. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with our Lee bullets. And those will be our first one here. So I just dumped the powder back in that was from those samples. 
we know that that's good powder and now I'm going to add a big uh, heaping teaspoon of the Ford Blue and we'll see what we get from that. So that's not quite a heaping teaspoon but uh, we'll get a little more. I said teaspoon, I meant tablespoon. This is a big tablespoon. So we have a big scoop in there. Let's get the lid on and shake it up. Oh yeah, very nice. Look at that. I'm going to keep going for a few more seconds just to make sure and then we'll dump them out on our sifting tray and uh, get them uh, stood up. You can see all of our bullets here. I'm going to give it a shake to get the powder on the bottom and then I'll leave this pan here while I move our sifter pan. And this shouldn't take you too long. Very nice. Now I'm going to use this tray to dump them onto this uh, pan here with our non-stick parchment paper. And then real quick before our powder sits out in the humidity any longer, I'm going to go ahead and dump that back into my container. Put that back on here so our paper doesn't fly off and set it aside. And we got to make sure this just keeps staying uh, nice and preheated and ready to go. We can see that these are all piled up. I'm going to shake them until they're leveled out. Now we just have a couple that are actually stacked up, which shouldn't be an issue. But I want to make sure that none of the bases are going to get cemented together. This is when our nice little uh, needle nose pliers here come in handy. And I'm just going to turn them away from each other and kind of make sure none of those bases are nut to butt, uh, so to say. Okay. And other than that, a little bit on the sides is no problem. It's just hard to break them apart if the two pieces with the most surface area get stuck together. So I'm not worried about any of that. I just want to be able to break them apart without uh, much hesitation. And there's a nice piece of the powder coating that must have uh, slipped out of the baggie there. But yeah, those clumps happen if it does get humid, so you want to keep them out of the humidity as much as possible. But my only storage is my garage, so I have what I have, and that's what I get to deal with. It's no big deal, though. You can break them up inside the bag, and you can kind of break them while they're getting swirled around with your bullets. Anyways, this is what our tray looks like. Pretty much good to go in my book. I'm going to throw them in here for... 20 minutes on 400 because that's what the instructions say but yours might be different read your instructions here we go and I said I use this piece of wood here to help me I set it on the end and it's just smaller than the width we'll pop it open and we can slide it into the slot push that back and we'll set our timer to just over 20 minutes because the time actually starts when your bullets are up to temperature. Okay, while those are cooking, I'm going to start on our hollow points here. And I'm going to use red, so I have this second container. It's been pretty much wiped out. And we're going to try red, and I'm going to try the non-stick foil, just so we can try some different powders and different uh, non-stick removal type methods. Set the green aside or the blue, green, whatever it's going to end up like. Here's our container. There's bugs out here and they're just eating me alive, but whatever. Okay, here's our uh, penta points. And about half full on our container. That's probably as much as I want to put into here. But if you had a bigger container, you know, you can probably do more. But for me, that's about as much as I want in one go. Now time for our ruby red. And I'm going to use my spoon. 
Get about one heaping tablespoon. In we go. And on with the shake weight. Pretty good coverage. Feel free to check it periodically and go again if you feel necessary. I'm gonna go ahead and keep going because we have, uh, you know, 20 minutes while this other one is cooking. So you can do the Elvis roll, you know. Do it like this, except his has uh, 60 pounds of bullets. Or you can do the taco tumbler, which is end over end. Or you just kind of do any combination thereof. Give it a good shake, flip, however you want to do it. But you'll see our coverage pretty dang good here out in the humidity of Tennessee. So that's good. We're going to dump it out on our sifting tray again. Alrighty. Since we have more bullets, I'm going to get a bigger tray this time. Nice and coated, and you want the dull side up at you, not the shiny side. Lost another. Actually, I lied, I'm not going to stand them up, but I will make sure none of them are, again, nut to butt so they don't get glued together and they're harder to uh, pick apart after the quench. I think we're good to go and I'm actually going to set this on top of the oven and that'll preheat our bullets so we don't have to wait longer than our 20 minutes and pretty much once we put them in there they're going to start curing and cooking and it'll be good stuff. So up on top. So we have these chilling on top heating up and we've got about 12 to 13 minutes to go. I'll get back with you here in a few. And we have just a few minutes left on our first batch in there. These are heating up and you can't touch those anymore. You need gloves for that. But I'll show you how we extract these. And I'm not going to be able to move the camera, so I'll just dump them into the quench and you'll get the point. But once they're in the quench, I'll get back with you after we hear the ding. While we're waiting, a uh, con, I guess you would say, for the foil here. Since I have it actually wrapped around the pan, when I go to dump it, if the bullets don't come off perfectly, I'm going to have to either pick up the tray and dump it in at a different angle or try and knock those off somehow. So sometimes that can be a little annoying. And uh, kind of the opposite with the parchment paper, you have to pretty much commit to dunking it in the water because it's going in there with the bullets. And uh, yeah. I'm going to turn this on to keep it up to temp. Pull these out. And just look at the perfect coverage on those. And I can pretty much tip it and they'll go into the quench. Now time to put these in with the same method. Now that is a little bit more uh, weight as far as bullets, more surface area. So we're gonna make sure that we get a full 20 minutes as well. We'll see you in a second. So we made it into our quench bucket here. You can see some of them are still stuck, but if you barely press on them, they'll come right apart. So we'll throw them over onto our towel there. Yeah, we got a couple perfect I'm gonna get these broken up and uh, I'll show you what's next so I have my bullets here and I'm just gonna dry them in my towel like so it takes just a little bit a little while a little few seconds then I'll throw them back in their box and they'll be done Here we have a box of bullets, oh yeah. 
All right, I've got my uh, 358 158s all done here in the Ford Blue off the parchment paper, ready to go, dried off. We have our hollow points in the oven right now with about 10 minutes. And I'm gonna coat some of these real quick and get them ready to go on the next batch. Actually, how about I combine them for our last one here? Mm. Okay, that's way more than I should have in this container at once, but let's see what happens anyways. We're actually starting to get something here. Let's keep going. There we go. We're getting some good coverage now. Beautiful. Let's dump them here and shake off our excess. So you can see how much powder we have left after all of that. Now I have to shake off our excess and then start uh, getting these on our pan before our timer goes off so they can get preheated and ready. Let's get to it. And I lied, we are going to reuse this piece of parchment paper. I'm just going to turn it over and use the other side. And we're getting real close to this oven here. I've got the rest of my bullets here. That's the 309s, sorry, the 312s. And I'm gonna get all this cleaned up once I get the next batch going, just so I can get my workstation uh, ready to go and picked up. But we're gonna get ready to pull these out here, quench them and end with the next one because I've still got two batches to go there because we had a lot of those 312s. So I'm doing that in two batches. And again with the parchment paper, Okay. Oh man, these look freaking amazing. Would you look at those bullets, my friends? Holy moly. This is gonna be kinda hard to dunk in all at once. Let's give it a shot. We got those in the quench, now in with the next batch. On to about 21 minutes and these will be up here preheating so one of the negatives of the foil as I was saying earlier is if your bullets stick which I mean barely barely stick to it there you're gonna have to rip it off or uh, dump in the whole tray and I tried dumping in the tray they didn't come off at all so then I had to just rip the foil off of it real quick because it was hot but uh, yeah, no big problem. Just pull them off this foil, which is now trash. And a lot more expensive than parchment paper. And yeah, these look freaking amazing. You can just kind of crunch them together and they fall apart. Holy smokes, those are beautiful. Yep, and then to the towel. You got a couple stuck. It's it's really easy with two hands, but Ooh, see this is the nut to butt I was talking about, and they're tough. Ooh, I might not get that one. But these are easy. These are usually pretty easy. But yeah, let me get back with you and uh, we'll get on with it. I gotta get these out drying. And the three twelves are baking right now. Okay, here we go. These are all separated now ready to get you know dried off here with the towel and then put in their box But we only had one couple here I was nut to butt everything else came apart So as long as you don't bake them with the two sides with the most surface area touching there You'll be fine. So remember never go nut to butt children Okay, here they are finally all split up. You can see it's stuck just perfectly, but it is a little bit thicker than the Ford Blue, which in turn 
sometimes it does take off a bit from the siding there which isn't really the end of the world I've uh, had a lot of that and I've shot them and I don't really experience any uh, negligible amount of leading so to me I'm not gonna worry about it and we're gonna size these later and use them okay we're about to get our first batch out here but I need to get my towel ready all right our first batch of the 312s is about ready there we go baby keep it rolling to keep it up to temp I'll pull these out dunk them in we got a message Okay, we're gonna pull this nonsense out of here. It's obviously trash now. Give them a good dry here in the towel and we'll be good with these. All right, we have probably 15 minutes left on our very last batch, which is the second batch of these, the Lee 312 155s. These are probably gonna weigh 160 grains maybe. But uh, just look how they came out. Those are freaking beautiful. A couple of lines there you can see, but I think we'll be just fine. Not a problem. I've shot probably a thousand of these already in the blackout, so that's what I've seen. That's what I expect. All good stuff here. We just have one more batch of those, and we'll be up to the room to start sizing. All right, we're finally back inside and we are done with the casting, done with the powder coating. This is the Lee 358, 158, round flat, I believe. Coming in right at 165 grains. So our alloy is a little bit soft, no big deal. Here is one of them after the smash test into the uh, cement outside. You can see it stayed on there perfectly and uh, we're not flaking or anything like that so all good here and actually one of them slipped into the uh the next bullet the mp hollow point and two of those i didn't sort out and they ended up with the uh, leaves over there but no big deal these hollow points turned out just as expected here's a smash test on the mp359 125 with the penta point again perfect adhesion no worries there and these came in right at 137 138 pretty uniform very nice hollow points they filled in just fine if you remember they uh, baked on their sides but those hollow points still got good coverage totally filled in good stuff right there and lastly our Lee 312155 these came in right at 160 grains 161 ish and this was the rest of the red I had from that mixed in with the rest of the blue I had from that and you can see it's mostly the Ford blue with some little speckles of the red throughout but uh, good adhesion there here was the smash test with that one of them laying down and one of them standing up so perfect coverage with that as well good stuff here today folks so anyways that is how to powder coat like a dummy that's my method it's been working for me and i live out in the south i keep the stuff out in the garage all year round humidity doesn't seem to be an issue Anyways, I appreciate you watching. If you enjoy this sort of content, feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel. You can also support me over on patreon.com slash dummy round. Stay tuned for more. We will see you in the next video. Have a good one.